Do you think it's going to go well with the Jews in the United States or anywhere else in the world? When they're trying to pass even Sharia law in the United States? I mean, come on, wake up! You know, people need to wake up what's going on. My brothers in Israel, you need to wake up. Ain shalom, chavrim, ain shalom. There is no peace, my friends. Uh, I know that they are saying, shalom, shalom, aval ain shalom. Peace, peace, but there is no peace. And uh, we, we have in the news uh, that, that broke um, earlier that the, 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 um, the nations have come together and have made a, a historical covenant with Iran to, to uh, lift the sanctions, partially as they say, um, and to, to come to a peace agreement with them. And, uh, and it's kind of ironic, uh, here we have John Kerry saying, and we'll play this here for you for just a second, uh, that uh, this is not for enrichment. Listen, listen to this take right here. This first step does not say that Iran has a right to enrichment. No matter what interpretive comments are made, it is not in this document. There is no right to enrich within the four corners. Now, it's kind of ironic. John Kerry is saying that this is not for enrichment. Uh, and yet, here we have the, the, the leader of Iran, the new leader that took Ahmadinejad's place there. Take a look at what he has to say about the enrichment and nuclear weapons in light of this agreement. Let's, let's listen to that. That's very, very interesting. It has been written clearly in the text of this agreement that Iran will continue its enrichment. Iran will continue its enrichment. And therefore, I announce to the people of Iran that the enrichment will continue in the same way it was before. So, you know, as the Prime Minister of Israel, the King of Israel, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu says, this is a historical mistake. This is not a historical agreement. It's a historical mistake is what it is. And, and Iran cannot be trusted. In fact, if anybody took the time to read the Bible, took the time to read the prophets, you wouldn't know what's going to happen. And, and no doubt this is why they have to do the enrichment of the uranium. This is why that they have to uh, be allies with places like North Korea, someone that can work on their, their uh, other parts of their, their mission for their bombs to, to deliver the, the nuclear warheads. Uh, this is why these things have to happen because we find out, and, and I had kind of just meditated a little bit about this before the Lord, what applies to this scenario? And the one thing that was interesting that came up to my own mind was the Gog and Magog war that is nearing at hand. And we read in uh, Ezekiel chapter 38, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog and the land of Magog and the chief of the princes of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him. And say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief of the prince of Meshach and Tubal. Now we jump on down just so you'll kind of get a little bit better picture of verse 5. I'm going to skip around, not skip around, but kind of go, go over this chapter a little faster, chapter 38 here. Because uh, then, then he mentions here, he says, Persia, Ethiopia, Libya, with them, all of them with shield and helmet. And he's talking about the invasion that's fixing to happen. He's talking about this great group that's coming. And by the way, for those of you who do not know, Iran is Persia. Um, so he says, Gomer and all the bands of the house of Togomar, of the north quarters, and all the bands of many people with thee, be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou uh, a guard unto them. After many days thou shalt be visited, in the latter years thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword. Now he's talking about Israel, because Israel goes into captivity. 
and is gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel, which have been always waste, but is brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely, all of them. And that's exactly what we have today. Israel is dwelling safely. Now, keep in mind, those of you that think that, well, uh, Israel, when they became a nation again, they would never see any trouble. God says they're dwelling safely here, but now God is also showing that there is a military campaign preparing itself to come against Israel Why she's dwelling safely. So it doesn't mean that the safety was perpetual at this time. So verse 8, After many days thou shalt be visited, in the latter years thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword, okay? Notice that, it's in the latter years, just kind of re-reading re, re right here. Uh, let's go down a little further here, back verse nine. Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm, thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land, and thou, thou and all thy bands and many people with thee. Thus saith the Lord God, it shall also come to pass that at the same time shall things come into thy mind, and thou shalt think an evil, Thought. Hmm. I always want to wipe out Israel, wipe her off the face of the map. And it's interesting because, you know, Persia, under Darius and Artaxerxes, the kings of Persia, during the time of um, Queen Esther, uh, uh, the king Darius, uh, Darius, all of these Persian kings, they, they were for the return of Israel to their homeland to rebuild the second temple. And, and we did. And, and the Persians or the Iranians were never really against Israel until modern days. Okay, so interesting thought here to think about. Um, so verse 10, Thus saith the Lord God, it shall also come to pass, that at the same time shall things come into thy mind, and thou shalt think an evil thought. And thou shalt say, I will go up into the land of unwalled villages, I will go to them that are at rest, that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls, and having neither bars nor gates. It's just the way Israel is today. It's modern day Israel. To take a spoil and to take a prey, turn thine hand upon the desolate places, excuse me, to turn thine hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited. Now he's given us a time frame. See, the desolate places was the Temple Mount. What did Yeshua say when he was here? Uh, your house is left unto you desolate until you say, Blessed is he that comes in the name of Hashem. See, in the name of the Lord. So, now these places are inhabited. And upon the people that are gathered out of the nations which have gotten cattle and goods that dwell in the midst of the land. Now, is it, when we read this scripture here about the desolate places, thine hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited. Now, was that where Yeshua was prophesying that Israel would be scattered as a nation, that the temple would be destroyed? Is he talking about the land of Israel itself being inhabited, that, it's, that it was desolate and the, the, the Jewish people were no longer there? Or could it be that he's speaking about the temple? Could this be a, a glimpse of when Gog and Magog will invade that the temple would be rebuilt by this time? And then they come down. Everywhere we look, it seems like that they're on the rise to do this battle at any time. And yet this, this agreement that the United States has brokered, along with several of their allies, with Iran and lifting uh, part of the sanctions and giving them all this money. Uh, it lets us know that Iran is not ready to, uh, to, uh, to do this attack as of yet. And Iran doesn't come by themselves. They're just part of a much larger contingent, a larger force that comes in. So um, it looks like we have an element of time. And it almost seems that the temple may be built at that time. Now, understand, I do say may. I can't say that for sure, but it looks like it might be. Um, verse 13, Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of the Tarshish with the young and lions thereof shall say unto thee, Art thou come to take a spoil, and hast thou gathered thy company to take prey, to carry away silver and gold, to take away the cattle and goods, to take great spoil? 
Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say unto God, Thus saith the Lord, In that day when my people of Israel dwell safely, shalt thou not know it? And thou shalt come, excuse me, I'm battling a bad cold here, um, from thy place out of the north parts, thou and many people with thee, and all men riding upon horses, and a great company, and a mighty army. And thou shalt come up against my people of Israel as a cloud to cover the land, and it shall be in the latter days, and I will bring thee against my land, and the heathen may know me when I shall be sanctified in thee, O God, before their eyes. Thus saith the Lord God, Art thou he of whom I have spoken in old time by my servants the prophets of Israel, which prophesied in those days many years that I would bring these Bring, bring thee against them. And it shall come to pass at the same time when Gog shall come against the land of Israel, saith the Lord God, that my fury shall come up in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath have I spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel, so that the fishes of the sea and the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the field and all the creeping things that creep upon the earth and all the men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence. And the mountain shall be thrown down, and the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. And I will call for a sword against him throughout all my mountains, saith the Lord God. Every man's sword shall be against his brother. And that's where all the nations begin to fight and battle as well. And I will plead against him with pestilence, and with blood, and I will rain upon him and upon his bands, upon the many people that are with him, an overflowing rain and great hailstones, fire and brimstone. Thus will I magnify myself and sanctify myself. I will be known in the eyes of many nations. They shall know that I am Hashem. This will also be when the name of Hashem will be restored according to Zephaniah. Uh, Notice, though, see what he says. This is so beautiful. I will be known in the eyes of many nations, and they shall know that I am the Lord, Hashem, that I am yod heh vav -He. And remember, I've said to you guys many times before, Zephaniah's prophecy tells us when a pure language will be restored, that we may be able to worship the Lord with a pure language. And... Uh, and that's in chapter 3 here. And he says, uh, oh gosh, uh, I don't have it marked in this Bible, so I forget which verse it is. Uh, feeling that just none of the nations there towers desolate. It's in verse 9. For them will I turn... Excuse me. Let me back up to verse 8, though. Therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, unto the day that I rise up to, uh, to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble, the kingdoms to pour upon them mine indignation, even to all my fierce anger. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. For then will I turn to the people a pure language that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. Again, it's during the time of God's jealousy. Uh, this is the seventh seal. This is where it is silence in heaven for the space of a half an hour, which we find, I believe it's in Zechariah. I forget exactly where it's at. Let everything keep still, for he's risen up out of his holy habitation. Another thing that's interesting is the plagues that it speaks of over here in the book of Ezekiel. Uh, the turning the, uh, oh gosh, what does he say here? Let me back this up. It makes me wonder if the two witnesses are, are like God. You know, God came down and says he was going to bring judgment on Pharaoh, but he used Moses to do it. So could that be what this is here again? Because we have here uh, verse 20, I believe it is. And the mountain shall be thrown down. Uh, it shall the sea and the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the field and all the creeping things. The men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence and the mountains shall be thrown down and the steep places shall fall and every 
wall shall fall to the ground and I will call for a sword against him throughout all my mountains and saith the Lord God, every man's sword shall be against his brother and I will plead against him, uh, here it is, with pestilence and with blood and I will rain upon him and upon his bands and upon the many people that are with him and overflowing rain and great hailstones of fire and brimstone. Very interesting. Anyway, the Israel is no longer, Israel is no longer an ally of the United States. Obama has successfully sided with Iran. And this may be more of a spiritual implication. And we know there are many American Christians and, you know, that side with Israel, that stand with Israel, but you have grown to a minority. In fact, Obama has labeled you as the number one terrorist in the nation now. Interesting how he's tried to delegitimize the existence uh, or the Jewish people themselves. Uh, there's a great movement amongst the Christian churches now, um, not the evangelicals. Many of the evangelicals still are strong supporters of Israel, but the other churches are, are really in a great movement to delegitimize Israel as being actually descendants of the true Israelites. Um, something that we, we, we see scripturally that would happen. Um, so just a lot of, lot of problems. And um, so I say to my Jewish brethren that are watching this video as well, um, we're about to be an enemy of the state, the enemy of the United States, because as the United States turns against Israel in principle, um, if there's any kind of wars whatsoever and the United States doesn't side with Israel, they claim there are allies, but if they don't side with Israel, if Israel decides to attack Iran and then the United States were to side with Iran, we're putting ourselves in harm's way in this country. Return home. If you can return home, go back home. Uh, you know, we need to go back home. Um, I want to thank those of you that are supporting this ministry. Uh, especially with the closing hours that we're living in now. There's many things we're still trying to get done. Gosh knows we are, we are by the way, for those of you that, that do not know, uh, we, we have put up a bid on some property up in North Carolina. We're looking at moving the ministry there. Uh, we want to downsize and uh, completely get away with all of the debts that we have here so that we can go full time in the ministry and, um, and not be hindered with all the financial burdens that we have where we're at now. Uh, so we certainly need your help uh, in, in making this possible, the move, the change, the ministry to be placed there, anything uh, that the Lord lays on your heart. We only ask you to, to contribute if the Lord leads you to. We don't want to, to take away anything that God may have led you in another direction on. Uh, but we ask you, if you are able to, we thank God for you. And, um, but somehow or another, support Israel. Um, that's what we do here, is getting the message, trying to get the gospel of Yeshua that opens up their eyes. God bless you. Pray for me. And we'll be praying.